Wordplay is a project, basically, as it says, playing with words with a group of young people. And the whole idea is to bring the objects in the museum to life. So that could be writing poems that we're going to turn into songs, or creating collages with words, or using newspapers and scrapping up the words and writing poems with that. But basically everything to do with the objects, and really exploring them through words and through poetry. Okay, so the first actual workshop was at Kettle's Yard, um, which was amazing. It's a beautiful building and we were allowed to roam free um, around this wonderful establishment um, with the five objects that they'd chosen and we basically had wordplay games and we were trying to get the kids not necessarily involved with the objects but um, involved with the objects and being creative and just trying to take them out of their normal workspace. So a lot of them, even though they'd signed up to a poetry summer workshop series, actually said that they hated poetry at the beginning, which wasn't the most, the most helpful start. But actually what they hated was the idea of poetry. So the whole, the whole idea of the first session was to get them to look at the collection, but also to get them to feel comfortable just writing. Three cards each, yeah? I want you to take a pen, take a card, walk around the house for like 10 minutes, and I want you to write down three words. So it could be One like word on each card. it could be like something that you've seen, or it could be something in a picture. It could be a colour in a picture. It could be an object that you like. Anything. But at the end, we're going to come back and Inge is going to try and do a freestyle with all of your words. Okay. So what was that one? And now we just How about that? Hey, that, yeah. Okay, look. Just find another one. Okay, wow. Yeah, so, first off, I've got surrealism. I'm like a big triangular prism in prison. My decision of words that I take and I use them really easy. I make the earthquake and next up, what's that? Mystiques? Mystique? I say it's so sweet and I do it nice like my volume gets tweaked and I climb up to the mountain's top peak and The house is basically a gallery but a house is an art collection within a house and um, we got them to do individual tours of the pieces that they really like to tell us certain things about them. If I, if I jumped into it it would be scary and creepy. And I can hear the crunching of someone eating the pack. And I can hear all the people talking. In the afternoon of that session, we split them up into two groups and got each group to choose their favourite object and to write a story, basically based on that object. And they could include rhyme, they could include alliteration, but it was basically just, just getting them to write something together. All right, so then just, can you describe them so you can bring them to life? And it has the rhyme with either scientist or scientist around the end. Everything that's placed in here, are we allowed to move anything here or not? No, we're not allowed to move anything. Okay, so they collected things from the whole world wide, like books, sculptures, and pictures of the time. What colour Afro? Yeah. Pink. <laughs> people moved. Then, then they, they moved, moved down. Out. But while they were living in the house, they turned it into an art gallery. At the next session, which was at the Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. It was slightly different because the actual museum's closed for the summer, so we couldn't see much of the actual collection. And we concentrated there on creating art through poetry. So rather than doing lots of speaking, because they did that before and they just got used to it, so we thought we'd give them a little bit of a break in the morning and get them to sort of chill out and concentrate on their own pieces. So we showed them some videos, showed them some photographs, used some newspapers to find stories, and then basically gave them the morning to create their own collages and to create either poems or random words that they associated with these tribal peoples in the photographs and they really really took to it really well especially the ones that were a bit quieter the week before were really into it and concentrating and they all created lovely collages to explain to each other this is my picture and uh, i put the words try happy because they are still alive and i put these words because um, of her various expressions and she's like happy. She's in the forest and she's thinking that she's thinking that she's like little and she's thinking of her family that's died and she used to love them. We also in the second week also got them to write 
a poem in a group so that they had, you know, they're continuously writing. All right, this one's about the people then, all right? So I'm just gonna write in brackets. Yay. We can do it about the landscape. All right, two more lines about what the people do. Rainforest people walk around there. Can you remember? Not Let's bothering. Try. Not bothering. And zoology was amazing because they basically uh, wouldn't accept any large groups because they knew we were coming and so we had basically the whole of zoology to run around so we're talking upstairs outside beautiful whale bones to downstairs in the murky depths where you've got Darwin's collection. We, we chose to concentrate on love poetry on the, in that session and you know we got them we got them working and we started to get them to open up a little bit more uh, talking about lots of emotions um, how they would have felt if they were you know a 500 year old fossil or no a 500 million year old fossil they had a template poem that they were working on that week so it wasn't so much writing involved which they've been doing the week before so they had this template poem which was i want to be your vacuum cleaner to hoover up your dust i want to be your ford cortina so you'll never rust it was based on a poem by john cooper clark so we used that format and then they wrote their own poem to do with the animals that we'd been looking at. I want to be your seahorse so we can ride around the ocean. I want to be your trumpet set so we can make beautiful music together. I want to be your squatty Islandica so we can lay on the beach for days. I want to be your museum of zoology so I can show you the animals of the we had kids writing love poetry and performing them to um, dinosaur fossils and bones. We finished it off with the slam, introducing them to what slam poetry was in the competition and having scorecards and they got to know, you know, how to criticise each other but in a, in a positive way. What happens at a poetry slam, yeah, is normally you've got, you've got these and at the end of the poem I ask you for your score, you put the scores up and the highest score and the lowest score are taken away and the three middle scores are added up. I want to be your killer whale, so I can always... <laughs> Save you when you're in danger. I want to be your wasp nest so we can live in a big family. Why did you give him six? Because he was like loud and then, and then he was like playing some actions which made it like good and then he kept on some eye contact but then he started not doing it. So. Once again on the last day we went around all of the sites that we'd been to. And the idea of session four was basically to give them a chance to express their own opinions and their own feelings about anything through poetry. So they'd, they'd done three sessions now focusing on different animals, different tribes, endangered languages, the art in Kettle's Yard House and we thought that now they've, you know, they've created really good pieces and written a lot about that. We thought it would be nice now that they know each other a bit more to give them the opportunity to actually talk about themselves. What I'd like you to do, alright, is to write the letters of your name and your surname down here and I want you to write a poem about yourself. To try and think, so this is, this is basically an opportunity to tell everyone about you. I can't think of an N word. An N word, I've got to. An N word. Oh, my book! S is for smart. I is for rapping. T is for totally tremendous. B is for brilliantly bright brainiac. I is for is for really intelligent. So first of all, so I think if we all come down here and we can watch her perform it and we can see how she's doing it. This, watching, then... this is my poem. M. It's for mouthfuls of monster energy. P, P is for peace. It's peaceful. Love, peaceful. Peace, there's peace around the world. Oh, peace. Oh, P is for peace. What? Peace. peace. Yeah, you're right. Peace. It's for delights. Yeah. D is for delusional, delicious delights. And A is for amazing acting. And then after you've finished it, we're going to go all together. Okay, so someone, do you want us all to say them at the same time? Uh, Shall I say Tegan is? Yeah. yeah, you say Tegan is. Tegan is. Totally awesome. Energetic. Energy drinks. Great. Oh, you don't want energy drinks. 
sorry. Okay, sorry again. Yeah. D. It's a delicious delight. Mm, yummy. <laughs> a is for amazing acting. <laughs> and it's for nice. Nice person. Yeah, me. <laughs> E is for energetic and obsessed with energy drinks. G, G is for great books. Just describe me. A is for animals, the ones I want to work with. N is for negotiating with mum to get me around. So for the final performance, we're doing the final performance at um, on a Saturday. And we've got the whole day to practice and then we're going to have the final performance at the end of the day. I want you all to read out one of your own poems. I think Kurt, you should read out the robot one, yeah. and you can read out another one if you want. But you've also got to read out other people's poems, yeah? So today we're working on getting you into the professional. Can I read the name of the So if there's like six people in the audience, you could be like, U is for ultra magnificent, R is for rap, 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 rap. Okay. So a couple of the groups are definitely performing pieces that they did as a kind of drama group and then some of the other young people may be going to explain the picture that they've done or the artwork that they've done so give them a chance to choose it and also to direct each other to just practice their pieces and practice with a microphone, practice on stage, get feedback. I want to be your tusk so I can help you fight your battles. I want to be your bird friend so we can soar all through the day and night. I want to be your kakapo so you can hear me when I call. I want to be your wing so make sure you never fall. I don't care, I want to be yours. I hope for the performance that um, bottom line for me is that they can see actually that they can all write, they can all, they all have established skills in creative writing, poetry, and regardless of what the academic world says, uh, they have large creative imaginations. Poetry 2011. I hope you enjoy us, your science and just sit back and relax. I want to be your sun queen so you don't get burned in the sun. I want to be your dope, the odour, so you don't smell when you run. I want to be your car queen so you can have some fun. I want to be your dark built pencil pillars so you can see, sense your every movement. And a care, I want to be yours. Um, I'd like to now introduce the poem called A to Z, which is about the whole project of all the people involved in the project. A is for artificial sound and for ageing. B is for bug plates and beetles and bites. C is for Caitlin and cool colour eyeshadows. D is for Dylan and radiant lies. A poker face fiddle with one in disguise. The main thing that I want them to get out of it is the knowledge that they actually can write because only a couple of them at the beginning said that they did actually write poetry and by the end it was quite big proof that they could all do it and we're all using it as well in the last session especially to get across feelings to other people. Regardless of the um, objects that we were initially focusing on, um, all of these carers showed true emotion and true um, grit and real intellect when it came to actually writing. M is for Martin and Flapjacks with Jess. N is for being her pick knife and detail. I is for Akapi kids all on their own. P is for the sea when you dive when you dive in for pearls. Open an oyster and unlock the world. Q is for quartz that heat up your quivers. I is for rugs with charm magic walls. S is for strong eagles, spirits they stop. T is for teasers, Jan called a deer calls, giant it three times and your sadness will fall. U is for unicorns, granting more wishes. B is for vicious wars, tribes just can't beat. W is for whale ribs locking you inside and X is obsessed with Xbox PS3 and yelling at all night when you should be, when you really should be. Mm. <laughs>